Hey up duckies, Andy Lippy here, back with another video. This time I'm kind of looking at the all the plugins in OBS. I've been doing a lot of uh, videos on them recently, and every single OBS video that I do, I introduce a new plugin. So I kind of wanted to put together a top five list of all the plugins that you need if you are definitely streaming. Like you definitely want to take your stream to the next level, and obviously you kind of you'll be able to innovate and really take everything so far and become very unique there's unlimited possibilities with these so definitely get subscribed definitely like this video if it is something that you do like because i do all kinds of different videos like this if you've got any questions come and check me out on my twitch stream at twitch.tv slash andy lippy stream there twice a day uh, in british time midday and also 6 p.m and also just get in our discord if you just want to have a one-on-one -on -one chat that's cool let's get on with it all right so here's the top five plugins let's go So all of these plugins I use on a day-to-day -day basis on every single stream and I when I'm off stream I love tinkering with the settings and, and trying to make new things and innovate and new ideas so I really want to see anything that you guys create with any of these plugins and just even come over to my stream and learn something new as well so without further ado I'm gonna start with five Okay, this one is quite an old plugin. This is Motion. I'm going to have all the links below to all these plugins and the videos that I've done tutorials on as well. But in the, in the top right here, you will see that video there. And the Motion plugin is quite an old plugin, okay? It's not been updated for quite some time because, I mean, it was great at the time. But it's getting a little bit clunky now and outdated. But it's still useful. It allows me to move elements on the screen, as you'll be able to see here. And it causes you to, to be able to move any element on stream and also make different transitions. Which is great, because most, most, most streams, I've said most three times there, most streams are basically one, one scene. Transition, next scene, and everything's static. You get static images, where here you can get flowing zoom transitions or just move your camera if it's in the way of the game. Okay, so moving into number four, we've got Transition Override Matrix. Like, this one is so awesome for you to really create stylized scenes. Okay, so when you've got multiple scenes, and for instance, in this tutorial that you're going to see in the top... Uh, top right there you're gonna be able to see how I've got my cowboy scene and I can transition between different scenes whilst fading but when I've finished with the cowboy scene it'll create my Andy Lippy transition so I can choose with that what transition each scene takes so say if I'm going from my let's chat to the game scene I can have a different transition for that or if I go from my game scene to my cowboy there could be a different transition for that so you can set up individual transitions for absolutely everything it's a little bit more in depth than the new up-to-date version of obs where you can do transition override so i definitely still would recommend transition override matrix so we've got replay source coming in at number three replay source is freaking awesome so there's so many different things that you could do with this my recent tutorial i actually talked about freeze framing which is so powerful because I've created so many new different scenes within that. The one in the tutorial is the at this moment he knew he yeah that one, and uh, <laughs> it's become a bit of a fan favorite on the stream. But I've actually innovated that even further. So if you want to actually see that, come on the stream and check that out. Okay, but you can actually create replays of instances. So say if you go on an absolute mad rampage. You can, you can hit replay and the last 30 seconds say you can choose how long it is. It'll actually replay that for a while. And you can either have that in a small section on the screen or you can have that full screen as well. I quite like doing it on full screen and turning all my audio off as well because it allowed me to just take a 30 second break to, to keep, keep on the level. Do you know what I mean? Because I like to make all my streams very engaging. So it allowed me to just kind of reset like a mini break but still providing content at the same time. Uh, I want to see what any of you guys come up with there. There's plenty of stuff that you can be doing with that, which is awesome. So moving into number two, I like to try and get through these quite quickly. I like my, my videos to be concise. We've got Move Transition. 
And this is by, done by the same guy that did Replay Source. Let me just get his name up. I always forget it. He, he reached out to me with his recent plugin um, when Move Transition came in. Exceldro. Definitely check out his plugin. So good. Replay Source, Move Transition. Incredible. So Move Transition is like an up-to-date version of Motion. And when I mean up-to-date, I'm talking he updates this plugin every single day. And it is beautiful. He's updating it that quick. I can't keep up with all the new features that he's adding. So I'm just using it for standard move transitions, which you will see in the video again in the top right there. And th this, this guy is an actual genius because he's made the motion plugin awesome as a transition. So let me let me just make this make this clear. He's made it so easy to use. So when you're following the the um, motion plugin uh, tutorial that I did, you have to work out the screen size, how big you want it to be, and then you need to get the screen ratio because it doesn't copy it all across. These are simple updates that they could do to this program. But Move Transition does it all automatically for you. You tell it what you want it to do, whether you want the scenes to move on out, move in, you can select certain sources to move, Will things stay the same? Will they not? You can move things across and it is so easy to use. I'm going to do so many more tutorials on that. So definitely get subscribed for that because it will take your stream next level. Absolutely next level. Okay, so this brings us to number one. So number one is going to throw you off a little bit. This is OBS WebSocket. And you're going to be thinking, what? Why, why is this first? Because OBS WebSocket opens unlimited possibilities, okay? So you can use any sort of, uh, any sort of application to control OBS. Does, are, are you getting that? You can use anything to control OBS. Uh, for instance, there is a plugin that I used to use uh, called, uh, what was it? Better... Uh, better points, I think it was. Uh, that link's gonna be below. I actually don't really recommend that too much because the free version, there's a few things, but then you gotta pay for it. And everything that I like to do on this stream, I like it to be free. Uh, I like to offer advanced tips and stuff like that where you don't have to fork out any money or anything. So, it, yeah, that one costs money, but if you're wanting people to control your stream with channel points, that's quite cool. So you can get it to change scene and stuff like that, and that wouldn't be possible without OBS WebSocket. There's so many different functionalities for OBS WebSocket. Uh, for instance, another one that I've recently been using um, that I'm going to be doing a lot of videos on. I'm still getting my heads around it. Heads? I've only got one head, mind you, I don't know. Um, I'm still trying to get my head a little bit around it, but as soon as I do, I'm going to be posting so many videos. I'm working quite closely with the, the creator, and I keep asking him questions to try and fumble my way through and understanding how it all works, just so when I do the video series, it, it's literally, this program is so big, it is going to be a video series on its own, and your stream is going to go absolutely mad. So again, stay subscribed to stay tuned for that press the notification bell all that standard stuff you know what i mean but that is why obs websocket is now my top plugin it doesn't do anything on its own or it doesn't feel like it is it's all the external stuff that you add to it okay all the external stuff and trust me you are not going to be missing out on that Okay, I've waffled on too long anyway. Uh, let me know if you've got any favorite plugins or anything that you like to do in OBS. Or even if you have any questions or anything you want me to cover in these videos, please do let me know in the comments below or come and check out the Discord, my Twitch, everything like that. Like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. All right, guys, put your rock over the stone. See you soon.